Well, we, we had uh, 16 adult females that we used for the study, and uh, we were using GPS collars, and they have a, basically a cell phone inside of them, which is kind of neat. So we're able to uh, take frequent points, and then over a long period of time, plus we're getting the data from the collar via a text message, just like you would re receive one on your phone, uh, with the data points on it daily. So I'm able to track the deer right now uh, from a remote location. We caught them using dart guns and uh, we basically chemical immobilized the deer and we, this is exactly what it sounds like, we shoot them in, the, you know, in a large chunk of meat, primarily the back ham, and uh, the drugs will make the deer go to sleep and then we'll go and find them and, and uh, put the collars on them okay. and then release them. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that I would answer that is uh, deer are crepuscular, so basically they move near dawn and dusk, and that doesn't change regardless of the moon phase or weather and all sorts of other things, but the intensity of movement in which period they decided to move in did change. And uh, in some moon phases, for instance, they decided to move more at dawn than they did at dusk. The new moon is an example of that where we saw a large peak in movement right after daylight, and then the movement was below average for the rest of the day and night. So uh, one thing, a common misconception is that deer can see better at night during a full moon because it's brighter outside, and that seems you know, logical, but according to our data, they moved less on average at night than we would have expected, but they did move more during the middle of the day and earlier in the day in the evening. And, uh, during a full was, moon? During a full moon, yes. And on a full moon day, I would get to my stand a little earlier. In the afternoon? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I'm not telling you that they don't move in the morning, but they just didn't, they didn't move more than we would expect on that moon phase. And there's a couple of quarters, basically when half of the moon is, when you're visually seeing half of the moon, those are quarters. And uh, on the first quarter, they in general move less throughout the day on average. So if you're, gonna, if you're working and you can't go hunting every day, that'd be a good time to work. You could work all seven days and then maybe take two days off the next week whenever you're in a new moon phase. And uh, one thing that I would add is uh, during the last quarter, which is we've gone past the full moon and now we're coming back to the new moon, you get to that half moon, and that one we saw the greatest variation in movement. And basically, if you were going to hunt the last hour of a day, you should do it on the last quarter because that was the most extreme movement we saw out of the whole study. I personally would not, although the movements are somewhat predictable, the solander tables are based on uh, fish catches, basically. So they did take data, so there is science behind it, but it's all with fisheries. And the difference in deer and fish, other than the obvious is, deer are crepuscular, which, you know, they move at dawn and dusk, fish aren't. So they react differently to whatever mechanism the moon is, is uh, causing them to move differently. So deer are always going to be crepuscular, and that's why I wasn't able to predict it, because it may say the deer is going to move in the middle of the day, and we know from you know, however long we've been studying and hunting deer that they just don't move that much during the middle of the day. So whereas a fish may bite more in the middle of the day, it's no different than biting at, at dusk or, or in the midnight or whatever. I think that it was a, a good snapshot of what we could expect deer to do across the southeast and probably across the range.